I'm sure you've seen a lot of videos about Samsung's new TV lineup, and I understand if you're confused or frustrated. So I'm gonna help clear some things up for you right now. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison, and while it's great that Samsung's 2024 TV lineup offers a ton of options to choose from, that can also be daunting, especially when there's a bunch of videos going up on YouTube talking about how this model doesn't have this one panel like it used to, and this other model has this anti-glare thing that you may or may not like, and this one size may or may not exist now or in the future. So here's a clean, easy to understand rundown of Samsung's TV lineup, and along the way, I'm gonna try to decrypt some of the stuff that you may have seen online recently. Let's start at the entry point of Samsung's TV lineup. These are Samsung's Crystal UHD TVs, and they are the models that you're likely to see at stores like Target, Walmart, or pretty much any other place that sells more than just electronics. The Crystal UHD lineup includes the DU7000 series and the DU8000 series. They range in size from 43 inches all the way up to 85 inches. These are what I like to call Samsung's bread and butter TVs. They are real workhorses. If you want an inexpensive TV for a spare room or a garage, or you just wanna get as big a TV as you can and you aren't super picky about picture quality, the Crystal UHD line is definitely worth a look. They are not super stripped down. You get three HDMI inputs, Samsung's Tizen Smart TV platform with all the apps that you need, and they can get pretty bright. They are called HDR TVs, but they don't do HDR nearly as well as some of Samsung's slightly more expensive TVs, and that's okay. They are meant to be very budget friendly. And speaking of budgets, if you want to save even more money, you can go back to the 2023 models, the CU7000 and CU8000. I mean, the 85 inch CU7000 has a suggested retail price of just $1,100. And as it ages out, it may dip down under a grand. That's a pretty compelling deal. And these TVs are super easy to find. I think they end up being like, uh, impulse buys for a lot of folks because Samsung is a trusted brand and the prices are pretty compelling. Moving up in the line gets you to Samsung's QLED TVs. The Q stands for Quantum Dots, which increases an LED TV's color performance and brightness. The 2024 QLED models this year are the Q60D, the Q70D, and Q80D. And again, you can save money by looking at last year's models. That would be the Q60C, Q70C, and Q80C. C is 2023 and D is 2024. These TVs offer better color, better contrast, and higher brightness than the Crystal UHD line, and they start packing more bonus features into them. They are all 60 Hertz TVs though, so they won't have as smooth motion uh, as some of Samsung's more expensive TVs. And while they're just fine for most video gaming, they aren't gonna support high refresh rates or variable refresh rates. I like to think of Samsung's QLED line as the most sensible choice for folks who want impressive picture quality at a nice price, but they don't consider themselves to be super picky about having the best picture quality or the most advanced features. Moving up from Samsung's QLED line is the Neo QLED lineup, which comprises the QN85D and the QN90D. These are Samsung's most premium 4K LED TVs, and that means that they have mini LED backlight systems with full array local dimming for the best black levels, contrast, high brightness HDR, they've got 120 hertz native panels with variable refresh rate, and Samsung's best 4K picture processors. We also start seeing other perks at this level, like Samsung's anti-glare technology and premium sound quality, with the ability to do some pretty unique audio processing with Samsung's own sound bars. It's safe to say that the Samsung Neo QLED TVs are for folks who want amazing picture quality and all the bells and whistles and they're willing to pay up for it. Because at the end of the day, these are premium TVs with a premium price tag to match. Now, I wanna take a moment to address some chatter that's been going on among TV enthusiasts about the kind of panel that the QN90D uses. It appears that Samsung has chosen to equip the new QN90D, which for now, anyway, is Samsung's best 4K LED TV. More on that in a moment. 
They've chosen to equip the QN90D with a VA type LCD panel. Now last year's QN90C used what's called an ADS Pro panel. And some folks are disappointed that this year's QN90D doesn't also have that ADS Pro panel. So real quick, an ADS Pro panel is lauded for its ability to have great black levels and very good off angle viewing, meaning you can sit well off to the side of the TV without losing a whole lot of brightness, contrast, and color saturation. It just means more people in the room get the best picture quality. VA panels have the best native black levels, but their off angle picture quality isn't quite as good as ADS Pro. So some enthusiasts see this as a step backward. Now I asked Samsung if they would talk about what panels get used in which sizes of the QN90D, and they would not discuss anything in detail. Their official response is that Samsung makes sure its customers get a great experience no matter what kind of panel is in use, which is a very PR friendly way of saying, don't worry about those details, just look at this great picture on this great TV. Now, honestly, even though I hate that kind of answer, the fact is that most folks, most of you watching right now, don't need to worry about what kind of panel the QN90D uses. What you need to know is how the TV performs, and that is what reviews are for. I'll be reviewing this TV soon, and I'll let you know what I think of it. For now, though, you can check out my first impressions video right here. But hey, if you really want an ADS Pro panel, then you can get yourself last year's model, the QN90C, and you'll even save a bit of money in the process. The performance between the two is gonna be very close anyway. Moving up even further in the Samsung LED TV lineup is the Neo QLED 8K TVs. These are the most advanced, most expensive LED TVs that Samsung makes. The model numbers are QN800D and QN900D. These TVs get the best everything. The best mini LED backlight system, the best processing. They are the brightest TVs that Samsung makes. They have every single fancy feature that Samsung has to offer. They are the ultra premium TVs. Now, do you need 8K resolution? No, you don't. But you don't buy these Samsung 8K TVs for the resolution. You buy them because they are the best of the best and they have stuff that you won't find in the 4K lineup. Are they worth the added cost? Mm, in my opinion, for most folks, the answer is no. But then most folks can't afford them anyway. These are great TVs for people who don't have to ask what they cost, and they just want to know that they got the best. Before I get to Samsung's OLED TV line, I want to quickly mention two specialty Samsung TVs and clear up any confusion about what it means if you find a Samsung TV with a model number that doesn't match up with what I've mentioned in this video. First, let's talk about Samsung's The Terrace and The Frame. The Terrace is an outdoor TV. It's been outfitted with stuff that protects it from wind and rain and dust. It's built extra tough. Now, I am not a fan of using regular TVs outside unless you are 100% committed to taking it outside only on nice days and only for as long as you intend to use it outside. If you want a TV that can live outdoors, get an outdoor TV. And Samsung's The Terrace is among the best performing, if not the best performing outdoor TV you can get from a picture quality standpoint. The frame is really something special. The frame is meant to be able to look like framed art on the wall when not being used to watch movies and TV shows or playing games. It's a great TV for everyday use, but it's specifically treated screen has this matte feel and anti-glare benefit that really gives the art it displays a realism that you've just got to see to believe. It looks so convincing that you think you could like reach out, touch it and feel the texture of the canvas and oil paints on that canvas. Now, if you run into any Samsung TV model numbers that don't line up with what I've told you about in this video or are in our graphic here, like maybe it's close but off by a digit or has an extra few letters at the end or something, that's because Samsung issues certain retailers their own TV model numbers. The model is essentially the same, it's just that say Best Buy will get a special allotment or Costco will get one with a special model number. 
Now as customers, that's just confusing, but retailers like it for their own internal reasons. So it's a thing that we have to deal with. Now we have arrived at the Samsung OLED TV lineup. And here is where things get a little bit tricky. I also suspect I'm about to trigger some people. Samsung makes two OLED models, the S90D and the S95D. Let's start with the S95D, the best of the best, or so it should be. The S95D has what's called a QD OLED panel. I've got a link to a video explaining QD OLED down below, but the short version is that QD OLED pairs quantum dots with OLED pixel technology for what some consider to be the ultimate OLED TV. QD OLED TVs can get very bright overall, but their best attribute is that they offer the highest color brightness and best color saturation at those high color brightness levels better than any other TV technology. The S95D has that special QD OLED panel, but this year it also has a special anti-glare treatment that has some TV enthusiasts a little bit frustrated. And so you're gonna see videos about that. You may also hear that the S95D has a matte screen. So let me start by debunking that myth. The S95D does not have a matte screen in the conventional sense of that term. The frame TV that I just mentioned, the art TV, it has a matte screen. The S95D has a different kind of anti-glare and anti-reflectant technology that at first glance makes the screen appear more dull if the TV is turned off and the screen is perfectly black. However, I found that once the TV is turned on and it's making a picture, the anti-glare and anti-reflection benefits far outweigh any teeny tiny loss of luster that could possibly be perceived by the most analytical of TV nerds, and even then, probably only in a side-by-side -side comparison. In other words, I think a bunch of noise is being made around this new TV for no good reason. And that's gonna get me some nasty comments down below. I'm okay with that. I've seen this TV up close and personable, and the undeniable fact is that most folks are going to love the S95D, whether they can afford it or not. It's brighter than the S95C that it replaces, and it can absolutely be called a bright room TV, meaning you can place it in a living room with lots of windows and not feel like you have to draw the curtains every time you watch TV. If you've got skylights, no worries. This TV is gonna look great with light pouring into the room from above. But if you like the idea of getting a QD OLED and you want a glossy reflective screen because you only watch in the dark anyway, that S95C is still available and at a lower price to boot. So knock yourself out. You've got options now, so seize that option while it's still available because eventually last year's TV models are gonna be gone. Stepping down the line is the S90D. And this TV has also become a source of frustration because it was always thought that the S90D was supposed to be a step down, less expensive version of the S95D that I just talked about. You give up Samsung's One Connect box, which some folks won't see as a loss at all, and the design is slightly different. The audio is perhaps not as advanced. It isn't as blazingly bright as the S95D, but otherwise, the S90D offers 90% of the S95D's goodness at a lower price. And all of that is true for the S90D, but only for two screen sizes, uh, for now. So let's start with that little bit of information. The S90D with the QD OLED panel is presently available in a 55 and 65 inch screen size only, and that's it. It could be that there will be a 77 inch model of this TV that also has the QD OLED panel, but Samsung has not confirmed the 77 inch is coming yet. I personally think it will, but that is not a promise. See, at one point, online retailer Crutchfield had the 77-inch S90D up on its site for pre-order, indicating that the 77-inch model is planned to come out later this year. But when I called that to Samsung's attention, they promptly told Crutchfield to take that webpage down. Yes, you can blame me for the disappearance of that page but here it is as I screen recorded it a couple of weeks ago. Now, that page wasn't made by accident. It was likely made because Crutchfield gets an info feed from Samsung and Crutchfield uses that info feed to populate product pages. That's why I think we can expect a 77 inch, or at least that Samsung currently plans 
to issue a 77 inch S90D. But Samsung could change its mind about that. So again, no promises. That's one reason the S90D is a complicated model. The other reason is that the S90D models in screen sizes other than 55 and 65, so that would be 42, 48, and 83, those screen sizes do not have a QD OLED panel. That's because Samsung Display only makes TV-sized QD OLED panels in 55 and 65 and 77 inch sizes. So Samsung buys LG Display's W OLED panels and uses them in the 42, 48, and 83 inch S90D. Now there's nothing Samsung Electronics can do about this until Samsung Display makes QD OLED panels with their yummy high color brightness and saturation in other sizes. Other than that is perhaps just not making the S90D in a wide range of sizes. But why would Samsung do that? Why wouldn't Samsung wanna compete with LG and Sony with its own flavor of OLED TV in those sizes? It might be simpler for us, but Samsung wants to compete and make that money. So the Samsung S90D is a confusing TV series, but only if you choose to follow the rabbit hole down far enough, which is kind of what we just did here. I think a lot of folks will just see a price they like on a Samsung OLED TV in a size that they want and pull the trigger. Well, Samsung is not saying, so it's all conjecture as far as I'm concerned, but there are rumors that Samsung is saving a QN95D, which might have that ADS Pro panel that folks like, which would also have a One Connect box possibly, which might have more mini LED backlights, more dimming zones, dangerously close to the 8K Neo QLED TVs, really, which might be the reason that Samsung doesn't want to bring that TV uh, into the US. They want to sell more of those 8K TVs. We might see the QN95D in Europe, like we did last year, but maybe, unlike last year, it doesn't end up landing in the US due to popular demand. I mean, the QN95D makes sense in Europe and the UK, where it's harder to sell 8K TVs due to power efficiency laws. 8K TVs, by the way, necessarily require more power to achieve the same brightness as an equivalent 4K TV. But who knows, we might see that QN95D here in the US after all. As for an S89D, I have no idea. I think it was a confusing model for folks last year, but I also think a lot of them got sold because it was one of the best deals in premium TVs. So we'll have to see. The important thing here is to note that Samsung is not saying anything. So there is a guarantee of nothing. And that's the rundown. Did you find the video helpful? Please let me know in the comments and not just because YouTube likes to see lots of comments on videos. I really need to know because if you did find this helpful, I'll do more like this for other brands. While you're down there commenting, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like. Twenty twenty four is the year of the D for Samsung. You can cut that out.